All right, so in this video, we're going to be writing a program that takes in an integer and toggles the nth bit in the binary representation of that integer. So for instance, if we take the binary representation of the number six, which is given to us by one, one, zero, and if we toggle, let's say this first bit here, B zero, as denoted by this numbering scheme here, if we toggle this bit over here, the result of that will give us this binary string one, 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 since we've toggled this bit from a zero to a one. If we again, if we toggle this same bit over here from this point, then we'll go back to what we had before. So we've gone from zero to one, we've toggled it again, we wind up back at zero. So a toggle is kind of like a light switch, you can toggle it on or toggle it off, you turn it on, turn it off. That's kind of the what is meant by the word toggle if you're not familiar with that word. So we're going to be combining some of the ideas that we've seen in previous videos on bit manipulation, specifically the concepts that we covered in setting and unsetting the nth bit in the binary representation of a number where we use the bit shift operator to help us do that. We're going to be combining that with what is called the XOR operator in this video. So let me just very briefly, I will leave a link to the videos where we do that in the description of this video, specifically where we set or unset a bit in the binary representation of a number. And I'm just going to very briefly go over the XOR function. So the XOR function operates on two bits. And if we just write down all the possibilities for what values two bits can take, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, we can write what the outcome of applying the XOR function on B1 and B2, or B0 and B1 would be. So if we apply the XOR function on 0 and 0, so if B0 and B1 take the value of 0, that is equal to 0. If it's 0 or 1, XOR 1, the result will be 1, and then this would also be 1 as well, and then 1 XOR with 1 is going to give you 0. So again, XOR stands for ex exclusive OR. So you can look up XOR on Wikipedia for a little bit more information on this function, but for our purposes, just understanding how this function applies on two bits, a simple truth table like the one we just constructed, is pretty much all we need to understand. So, as I mentioned, we're going to be combining the idea of the XOR function along with the bit shift operator to solve this toggling type of problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to write some examples. So, I'm going to say example, and we're going to stick with the example that we initially described in the beginning part of this video, namely, we'd like to toggle the zeroth bit, the binary representation of the number six. So again, the number six is given in binary as the following number. And then what we want to do is we want to toggle the the first bit, the zeroth bit in this case, the one on the far right, we want to toggle that one in the opposite. So basically if we had a string like this and we applied it in some way to this bit here, we want the outcome of that to flip this zero into a one. Alternatively, if we had a one here, then we'd want some way of using the string to apply to this string over here in such a way that we can toggle that from a one to a zero. So let's go back to what it was before. So basically we need to apply some function on these two things that is going to result in the opposite of whatever this is. So if we look at our truth table up here, we see that if we apply the XOR function on bits zero and one, we're going to wind up with one. So applying XOR to these two things here is going to wind up with a result of one. Alternatively, if we had, let's say, this example here where this is representing the number seven and we wanted to toggle this bit now off, so we wanted to flip it from an on position to an off position, then if we look at the truth table here where we have two bits both set to one, the result of that is going to be zero. So that's going to toggle it from one to zero. Let's go back to what we had before. So basically what I'm saying is that if we apply the XOR operation, the XOR operation is generally denoted by this hat operator. So if we say, uh, for instance, zero XOR zero, it's denoted by this hat operation in many programming languages, Python included. So basically if we take the XOR between these two strings, we're going to wind up with a resulting string that's going to have this bit in the binary representation of the number that we're after toggled in the opposite position. So let's go ahead and just do the XOR position of each of these numbers. So one XOR with one, that's gonna give us one. This is also gonna give us one. And then as we mentioned before, this is going to toggle and give us one. So let's take a look at the other example where we have the number seven given to us by this binary representation. And if we were to toggle this bit, again, we'll 
be focused on toggling the zeroth bit, the bit on the far right of the string. And if we again apply the XOR function in this way, nothing changes over here, so these are still ones. And then one XOR with one over here is going to give us a result of zero. So this is going to be the function that we're going to apply. And if you haven't already seen or realized based on the previous videos that we've done on setting and unsetting a, a, the nth bit in a binary string, this is really just equal to shifting one over by some number of bits, where some number of bits is given by this number, and that is n. So let me just indent this a little bit more. I'll indent this as well. I'll put a little line here just to make this look nice. Same thing with this one. So let's just take a look at another example where maybe we want to toggle the second bit. So let's stick with our example of six. And again, the binary representation of six is one, one, zero. And we want to toggle, let's say the second bit. So this bit right here, we want to toggle that one. So what we would do is we would shift the one over all the way over to two positions. So the string that we would be applying the XOR function to with respect to the binary representation of six is this string here, which is really just written as one shifted over by two, where n is two in this case. So if we were to apply the XOR function to these two strings, again, what we would wind up with is the toggled bit over here. So one XOR with one is gonna give us zero. So notice how that toggled that bit off. And then we're going to do the XOR here. That's one, and then this is zero. Also notice how this zero XOR with zero maintained it. So the value is exactly the same. And then one XOR with one, again, maintain the value of that. So it didn't flip any of these bits. The only one that's changed is this bit right here. So that is why the XOR function is really useful for this particular problem. So let's go ahead and go down here and code up a solution. And again, the solution is going to be quite concise now that we understand how to apply this XOR function in this way. So we're going to create a function called toggle nth bit. And it's going to take two parameters. The first is going to be the number that we want to apply this function to. And it's going to be an integer. And the next is going to be the nth bit that we want to toggle on or off in the binary representation. So all we really need to do is return x, which is the number that we get, x ord with 1 shifted over to the left by n. So however many positions to the left we need to shift over that 1 is where we're going to move that uh, one, two, and then we're going to apply an XOR function to the number and the binary representation of the number that we shifted over by n. So that's going to give us our result. So we can go ahead and check that this actually works as expected. So let's toggle the zeroth bit of the binary representation of six. So we'll just print out the result. Actually, what we can do is we can store, uh, store this in a variable. So we'll say y is equal to toggle nth bit and we'll feed it six and zero. And then we can go ahead and print out y. Let's go ahead and see this also work for toggling the, let's say the, um, the zeroth bit of the result of y. So basically what I'm suggesting is that we store the result of this toggling into a variable called y. That's gonna give us, the binary representation is gonna give us one, 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 or in other words, it's going to give us the number seven. Then let's take that number seven, toggle the bit, the same bit, off and then we should arrive back to six. So really what we've done is we've started with six, we toggled the zeroth bit to one, that's given a seven, the binary representation, it's one, 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 printed that out. Then we go back and say, okay, now toggle the zeroth bit off again to what was initially, and that's going to give us one, one, zero, which is six in binary. So let's just go ahead and verify that that's actually what happens. So we'll, uh, actually what I need to do here is I need to feed this in uh, y not six. So I'll write that, I'll clear the terminal, and then I'll say Python toggle nth bit. And indeed, we see that if we toggle the zeroth bit in the binary representation of six, we get one, 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 which is seven. And then when we toggle that same bit off again, we arrive back at six. So that's what we've got. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions on how this works, please don't hesitate to mention anything in the comments. The code, as always, will be provided on my GitHub. The link for that will be in the description as well. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.